It's normal to make mistakes at work. We're all human, after all. But when those mishaps lead to brushes with the law, or worse, getting thrown in jail, well, that's a whole different story. Here are five people getting arrested at their jobs. Number five, Amazon employee goes on a high-speed chase with police. A routine traffic stop unfolds into a high-adrenaline chase involving an Amazon employee and law enforcement. The setting is an ordinary day on the road, where our story begins with a police officer initiating a stop for a speeding vehicle. The driver, an Amazon employee, is at the wheel of a rental car, cruising well above the legal limit. How come you're going so fast? What's that? 70? Okay, I had you at 84. The driver tries to make up excuses, but the officer isn't having any of it. Okay, when you came through Braxville, you were flying. Okay, where, where are you heading now? The officer questions him further. Okay, where do you work at? Amazon? All right, what's that card? The driver is then asked about the vehicle's paperwork. What is this? It's a rental? Okay, do you have the paperwork for it? Yes. With the vehicle being a rental car, the driver isn't able to provide the officer with any concrete answers. All right, is there any paperwork for the vehicle at all? I really don't know. That's I mean, I mean, is there anything in the glove box? I mean, I know her. That's why I did this one. Even after the officer presses... Well, that's why I'm, I'm asking you if you can look and see if there's any in there. The necessary documents are still nowhere to be found. What's that? Okay, there's nothing in the center console because usually they have paperwork in the vehicle. Amidst the search for paperwork, an unexpected discovery shifts the tone of the interaction. Now what's between the cup and the water bottle? What's that? Okay, well your car doesn't allow you to... The revelation of illegal substances in the vehicle... Okay, well, it's in the car. I mean, that's, that's kind of my concern. Okay. brings about a series of questions about the rental agreement and any other illegal items that might be lurking within. Are you named on the rental agreement? Is your name on the rental agreement, though? Okay. Is there anything else illegal? The officer, not convinced by the driver's answer, asks him to step out. Let me open that. I'm going to have you step out and make sure there's nothing else illegal in the vehicle, because you're, you're in possession of... The man continues to justify his case. You're speeding in your possession. Not to smoke that, that's for edibles. You can smoke it too? Just as the situation seems to get under control, the unexpected occurs. Okay, he's running, he's running. <laughs> Due to the man's split-second decision, the traffic stop turns into a full-blown chase. He exited, he exited Miller. Correction, Wallings, he exited Wallings. However, the chase is cut short because this happened. Okay, he crashed. Copy, mail crashed. <clears throat> Where's he at? The end of the exit ramp for Wallings. The aftermath is a tense standoff. I could see him! Stick your hands out! Stick your hands out where I can see them! Here they go, sir. Let me see your hands. Keep them there! Do not move your hands! The driver is left with no choice but to follow the officer's orders. Crawl out! What are you doing? Crawl out! Keep your hands visible! Which leads to a pat-down by the deputies to ensure he has nothing on his person. Yeah, no, sir. Check that. That's a pocket. I think he. Amidst the chaos, his thoughts turn to the money found in his pocket. That's my money. I see that. Oh, Amazon pays pretty well. 
That's my Willie, that's my wife's shirt. That's my wife's shirt. How about you get on door for me? After the search, over you on your go, knees. You get on both knees, all right? Forward. Can y'all get my phone, please? We'll wallet. get it. The man offers apologies to the officers. Good job, sir. I just got scared. Why? Why is that? Am I going to find something in the car? No. Yeah, Why would you run? Scared. Just got scared. Scared about what? However, the cops remain skeptical. Parole or something? You just get out? What's up? Just scared. Really, the officer scared me. I got kind of scared when he was telling me to get out. Kind of scared. He's like one of the... And then, the truth comes out. Whose car is that? It's my wife's it's rental. rental. Oh, boy. It's your wife's or is it a rental? It's my wife's. Really? Why'd back. you tell me it was a rental? The driver comes clean about the vehicle. But it's in our name because she got our other car in the shop. Hey. How are you? Huh? All right. Step back over here. <laughs> Can I get, can, can y'all please put my money in my pocket? The conversation shifts back to his money. We'll take care of it, relax. That's, that's a lot of money, please. Can y'all please, just please, because that's not my money. Well, we're in it. Please, please, please. Whose money is it? Please, but the money, because it's not my money. With him seeking reassurance from the officers. That's a lot of money. Yeah. How much is there? 1500 almost $1,600. dollars are about 1550 That's a lot of money, like 16 Second guy this morning who has his mom's money on the officers assure him of the safety of his belongings, all captured by their cameras. It's my wife's money. Oh, okay. A little bit better. All right, come over here, man. Let's have a seat in the car. Yo, please. We'll get, we'll get your stuff. Money to Nobody's going to take your I money, man. Camera right there are cameras rolling in every direction. As the officers secure the scene, their conversation hints at the presence of a firearm in the vehicle. Through the gun? Yep. He's reaching back a lot. Because I, I had him at gunpoint right at the door. I was screaming for him to show me his hands. So the mag is adding a grave dimension to what started as a simple traffic violation. Looking down that ramp, man. He kept reaching in the back when I let him up to stop on the on the initial stop. And then when I when he crashed, I came up with my gun on the driver's side, he kept reaching. The officer addresses the issue directly with the driver. I had no gun. You just drive around and carry mag with you? Uh, there was some mags that I was supposed to leave behind. And doesn't mince his words. My concern is we got kids, we got people that walk around. I don't need somebody finding a loaded gun. I didn't have mm -hmm. gun, The officer, however, maintains a skeptical stance regarding the driver's explanation. I read because I was scared. Right, here, step out a minute. I want to make sure. This is your squad with dispatch 1775 Jonathan's train for an 84 year old female anemic. Not very. The officer ensures the driver's safety. My back, my neck. Your neck hurts? As well as the security of his property. Chew your property. Okay. Everything's Relax. on camera. About the, the inside property. of the car is on okay. camera. Nobody's nobody's gonna, gonna take your stuff. No one's gonna take. They have a candid conversation with him, discussing the potential consequences of his choices. Sit down. It's happened to me before. Well, we don't like people lying to us. Okay, you fled. You're lying to us. There's a gun somewhere. All while still showing concern for his well-being. That's not cool. Okay. Getting you to the uh, hospital to get looked at. Despite the driver's insistence that he does not need medical attention, we're here to help you. I understand, but I don't need no help. So y'all gonna make me go to the hospital? The officers remain vigilant, ensuring that all necessary precautions are taken. Check you out. Make sure you're okay. The encounter concludes with the man being wheeled away by EMTs. We're left wondering what happened to the Amazon driver. But one thing's clear. He wouldn't be in this mess if he hadn't bolted during the traffic stop. Now, he's probably got some serious explaining to do. Especially to his wife. Number 4. Postal delivery man arrested after drunk driving on the job. Things take an unexpected turn for a postal delivery man as his erratic driving captures the attention of the police, resulting in a stop. Here's what happens next. As officers approach the driver, the air is tinged with the unmistakable scent of intoxicants. 
I'm I'm just stopping you because I'm, I want to check on you. I don't know if you're the mail carrier or not, but someone called in um, that a mail carrier in this area. The driver's speech does him no favors either. Do you deliver in this area? Um, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm okay though. The cop decides to put him through a series of sobriety tests. So the first test is going to be the horizontal gaze and steadiness. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I can take down my mask if it's easier to do. Okay. First, the eye test. Keep your eyes on the top of that stimulus, the top of my pen, and keep your head straight. Okay. Do not move your head between your eyes during this test. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Then the walk and turn test. I want you to place your feet together, arms down by your sides. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to have you do is walk in a straight line, okay? So, as expected, our postal worker struggles. Your right heel touching your left toe. Okay, perfect. Uh, and are you, are you able to... His attempts are futile, and there's a moment where he acknowledges the crux of the problem. I'm not. Okay, okay. Um, is there a reason, or is this too hard? It's because I'm in talk. Okay. Okay. How much have you had? A little too honest, am I right? Can you tell me how much, or if you can think back to how much you consume? Like one drink, several, too much. It's admirable how he doesn't try to sugarcoat anything and just lays it out there for the cop. Um, were you drinking hard alcohol or beer? Uh, hard alcohol. What kind? Uh, uh... I mean, even the cop appreciates his straightforward answers. Okay, okay. And was that before your shift today, or during, or after? Both. Both. Okay. Alright, well I... Even his response to what happens next is just, well, brave. It takes real courage to face the consequences head-on like that. Um, so, as a result of that, I'm going to be placing you under arrest, okay? Sure. Okay, thank you. Soon after, his things are collected. And he's then prepared for transport. I think we got everything, okay? So we're gonna head that way. I'm gonna help you guys in the bathroom squad, okay? Michael J. Weertz, as he's identified, is placed under arrest for a first offense charge of operating while intoxicated. Number three, DoorDash driver gets pulled over, tries to flee from police. A DoorDash deliverer's routine day takes a sharp detour when she's unexpectedly pulled over by the police. The day starts like any other, with the driver navigating the city on her moped, picking up and delivering orders. And then, this happens. Yeah. yeah, I got my, what you call it, tight on everything for the bike. You, you, need a you need a license plate for it now, so you can work and use it. In New York, even smaller vehicles like mopeds require registration if they're used on public streets. It's a rule many might overlook, especially when the vehicle in question seems as harmless as a bicycle. The driver attempts to explain a predicament. So as you can see on the DoorDash thing and everything, I can use the bike for DoorDash. I'm picking up a delivery right now. But the cop swiftly clarifies the situation. I'm doing delivery right now for DoorDash. Yeah, was it a problem? It tells you. Yeah, yeah because you can't, you can't have uh, this on the road. Wait, it's on the sidewalk. It's a 49. It's all you come across. The cops ask about the moped's paperwork. CC though. Doesn't matter. If you're using it on the road, you have to have it registered with New York State. Do you have any paperwork for it at all? Yes, I do. I can yeah, show yeah. you right now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, I can show you right now. I guess you like. As the driver scrambles to find her documents, she stands her ground. Why? I don't. I don't understand. I'm doing Uber Eats. I, I'm I have doing a job. You me to she has a license. Well, who, who, you were I, driving this. Yeah, but I was driving too. Yeah, but she was but driving. She was driving. But things quickly heat up, turning a simple paperwork check into a full-blown confrontation. But I drive it too. That has nothing to do with what She we was saw. driving, so we need to see her license because she can't I'm be about to show you my title to the bike, sir. Right. I'm just trying I to. I understand, right. I understand, man. But maybe... And just when you're hoping for a peaceful resolution, things take a wild turn. 
not getting away. Oh, God. Stop playing at Michael trying to take one. Amidst all the chaos, the driver's colleague suddenly shows up. And I understand, ma'am, but I don't you need to have a license. I'm doing a job right now. I'm a licensed driver, so since I'm with her, it, 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 doesn't that make sense? All worked up about what just went down. You and him, you're scared. You're not from around here. You're raised in a white neighborhood and you're scared of black people. The driver's frustration hits a boiling point. And tensions soar as she brings up her family ties to law enforcement. Unfortunately, this doesn't really do anything for her case. The officers are unmoved by this revelation. And are focused solely on the matter at hand. As the discussion continues, the driver and her friend's agitation grows. The accusations fly, tension mounts, and the situation seems to reach a deadlock. The driver is adamant about her rights and her innocence in the matter. Yeah, I got the, I got a screenshot of it in my phone. I'm not, I told him I'm doing Uber Eats. Then provide the game or not run. It's not a run for no reason. The police try to reason with them, but their words fall on deaf ears. The license for the bike. Now I'm running. Plus I'm not running. I'm not either too keen. You're resisting. You're upset. I didn't have a chance in her. You don't want to stand up. Meanwhile, the friend, still recording the whole ordeal, keeps making a scene. Even with the cops trying to assist, the driver's aggression towards them doesn't let up. On the other hand, her friends fiercely rally to her defense. The police remain resolute in their duty. Ultimately, the woman faced charges of reckless driving, obstruction of governmental administration, and resisting arrest, alongside several citations. Number two, worker gets arrested for stirring up trouble at restaurant. An ex-employee, just released from jail, decides to revisit her old workplace. The reunion, far from warm, quickly spirals into chaos. The day starts like any other, until the ex-employee, Tiffany, steps in, her presence immediately raising eyebrows. She just ran that way. She came in here demanding a bag, then said we stole her stuff. She looked really strung out, started breaking stuff in front of our customers. Yeah, she just got out of jail like a week ago. She showed up here. When she the manager of the restaurant recounts everything that's happened since Tiffany's arrival. Like a day, and then um, she left her stuff here, which is like a couple of bags of junk. And then she left, then came back here demanding what her stuff. We gave her her stuff. Then she said we took all of her And let me tell you. The owners don't hold back when they spill all the details to the police. I didn't even go through her stuff. Does she still work here? Or? No, she, she doesn't, doesn't work, work here. She's just whack. She got some other bags that she had left out back, but then when she came in here, she had the bag, but then started... You can tell they're both pretty shaken up. Her stuff out, dumped it out and put bourbon in her bag, and she was demanding her things. Yeah, and those people no, are all shook up that are sitting at the table. They're probably never going to come here because they think we're a knife and gun club. But really, 
Who does that? Right here. And she was screaming about a ring from the Ryans, and I called Nicole, and Nicole's like, Kelly, I don't have a ring, but I asked for um, a Stella, or okay. I'm sorry, a girl. One of the restaurant employees steps up to share their side of the story. She used to work here, but then she went to jail, so she just got out. Okay. And she had left some of her stuff in the mullet room. Okay. She gave, she brought me this trash bag, and she was like, you swapped my stuff out for this, and this is... Instead of earning her any sympathy or support, Tiffany's actions only managed to push her further away from everyone else. And of course, I was like, I don't know Tiffany, you know, I don't know what you had. I didn't put her stuff away, so I have no idea. And then she was, uh, she was like, can you call Kelly? And I was like, no. I said, uh, what would you like me to call her for? And she said, uh... Things quickly spiral out of control as Tiffany, convinced of her innocence, throws a tantrum and creates a scene. Cause a f scene, and then she just threw everything off up here. She broke all the rules and stuff, like, and then she just ran out the door. Mainly, this in here is just filled with customers, so she just made a big scene in front of all the customers. I have one. Her actions turned the restaurant into a chaotic scene, leaving both customers and staff utterly bewildered. It was like crying because I'm so scared. Just so you know, she has, she dreaded her hair with some fake hair, so she has like long shit sticking off of her head and like sticking up. She looks not like this. Okay. Tiffany, however, is nowhere to be found, having made a swift exit. Trailers are, Grovewood or whatever, that's where Jill Watts lives. Like, maybe. Is that the direction she was headed? She could... Yeah. Didn't she go well, that she way? that way. She went across oh, she the went street. across the street? Yeah. It's like... oh. The deputies, determined to get to the bottom of the incident, track her down. Doing well, how are you? Pretty good. Looking for Tiffany. Tiffany? Yeah. One minute. Thank you. It's there that Tiffany, still agitated, shares her side of the story. Hi. Deputy Morgan with the Sheriff's Office. What's uh, I'm investigating a disturbance that happened over the, yes, sir. the fish house, and I'm trying to get both sides of what happened. Okay, now so I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. All right. She speaks of her recent jail time and the personal items she left behind at the restaurant. Not that long ago. Okay. And beforehand, I was working up there, and I left this bag, another purse that's still inside, and another purse that was a little camo bag that I had. Um... Amidst her narrative, she repeatedly emphasizes the value of the possession she claims to have lost. $10,000 ring that was found at in the parking lot of Ryan's after he had his 14th anniversary. I've taken the ring up there, the woman across the street seen the ring, all of them have seen the ring. The ring is While also detailing her dramatic entrance into the restaurant. I asked Shannon, she was at behind the counter, I said, I asked her where my stuff was. She said, I think it's in the mullet room. Mullet room's wide open, it's the room all the way to the left, out back. I go over there, <laughs> nothing in there. So As the deputies piece together the events, <laughs> I go back in the air. I say, where the f to his nephew, that other lady's son, and uh, I think it's in the, uh, the berry room or whatever. They uncover a story marked by miscommunication and heightened emotions. A $10,000 ring in it was missing, but here's this bag of trash. The girl with the long hair takes the bag of trash and goes, oh, it's just a bag of trash? And I went, <sighs> and I slammed everything off the fire. Tiffany, in her pursuit to reclaim what she perceives as rightfully hers, unwittingly escalates a minor misunderstanding into a chaotic ordeal. What was the point of that? Absolutely none. It was jackass. <laughs> did it break anything or did it just move everything? Mm, I would say that it probably broke something because it sounded like it. Emotions run high as Tiffany begins to show signs of distress. <laughs> I'm not a liar and I'm not a thief. I'm not a piece of shit. <laughs> was, but there was, was it was empty. I have everything in the world. Like that bitch has a size house, has nice size shit, and it, like it's a game. The deputies, in their role as mediators, attempt to bridge the gap between Tiffany and the restaurant staff. All your stuff is there. I laid eyes on it, including the ring. So it's Honey, it's safe. Then why didn't they just give it to me? Not that I can't answer, but it's there, and it will be returned to you. So at least there's that peace of mind. This assurance, however, does little to quell Tiffany's agitation. There, I laid eyes on it myself. Why wouldn't they just give it to me? I, have, I can't answer that. Just why wouldn't they just give it to me? Smoke your cigarette. Hang out right here. Don't go, in, <laughs> don't go inside, okay? Uh, that I can't answer. You know, I Tiffany's actions at the restaurant seal her unfortunate fate, a consequence she seems prepared to face. Because it's all whites. Everything in here is whites, man. Everything in here is just to go to jail. Because I already knew I was going. I didn't my paperwork. All right, just leave it there. Leave it be. All right, let's go. I'll just, don't worry about it. The deputies, having done their due diligence, can only shake their heads as they escort her away. See, you're getting charged with breach of peace, basically disorderly conduct. You want to do an open business, you cause the disturbance. Petty theft from a year ago? From a year ago. Are you on paper or did you flatten uh, it out? Well, I ran for a year and I went... Tiffany, however, seems oddly unfazed, as if jail time is just another part of her routine. And uh, I never Violet, showed up. Yeah. <laughs> never even went because I shouldn't have been on paper for a petty theft. So you're off. You're not on paper anymore. Though? No. At least you flattened it out. And you're not violating nothing. 
It's almost as if she's treating jail like a weekend getaway, stepping out for some air and then casually returning. Stay right here, I'm gonna pat you down before right. we go in. Nothing on you? No. Nothing in you? No. I asked because I've just recently dealt with that again, so. Definitely not. As Tiffany is secured in the patrol car, the discussion circles back to her bag. My stuff up there, up at the fish house. Up at the fish house. Yeah, who, because I'm not, who are those people? Do you trust those I people? I don't know. I'm absolutely not, and I would like I to. I don't mean the people at the fish house, I mean the people here. The officer reassures her about retrieving her belongings. You really can't trust anybody. Oh, I agree. I'll ask one of these other deputies to go retrieve your stuff, and we'll take absolutely. it with us. Absolutely. Thank you very much. They don't need to sign a trespass, right? Never sign anything. Back at the restaurant, the officer communicates with the owner. I, 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 want, I want catfish uh, trespassed as well because catfish also told us he's coming to kill us all. True to his word, he ensures that Tiffany's bag is securely handled. Not there. Was there another bag? I thought she said, I thought, was it Shannon? Oh, yeah. So there's another bag? She took all of her bags. She threw a bag of trash at Alyssa. That's it. That's okay. Really... okay, I just wanted to make sure there's yeah. nothing else for no, her. The owner, still frustrated about what happened, continues to vent about the disturbance Tiffany caused. And by the way, she broke things. She broke the other bowl yes, and she the, threw we, things we at saw Melissa. It. The other deputy took the sworn statements and everything else. I was getting the impression that you guys didn't. Despite the lingering frustration over Tiffany's behavior, the officer delivers some good news to the owners. I have basis to arrest her. Oh, no, like I said, she's you in the back of his like car that. right now with uh, handcuffs mm -hmm. on her way to... Charlie well, County. once I get drop this off, she'll be on her way to Charlotte County Jail. But this is it? Yep. With Tiffany's situation being addressed, they can finally breathe a sigh of relief. I'm going to get back over there, All right. and I hope that we uh, fulfilled something for you, okay? Because like I said, we got the arrest, we got our trespasses, what All you right. want today, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Even Tiffany, despite being en route to jail, expresses her gratitude as her possessions are returned to her. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. That's her ring. So you got your stuff. Thank you. No problem. Not, not a it's quite a sight, seeing someone so cheerful in the back of a patrol car. Tiffany was charged with breach of peace or disorderly conduct. Let's hope this is her last stint in jail. Number 1. Fast food employee gets arrested after being physical with co-workers. A fast food worker finds herself in hot water, leading to an arrest that's as bewildering as it is intense. It all starts with a day that spirals out of control, transforming a regular shift into a scene no one saw coming. The officers are met by the manager, who briefs them on the incident. That's her? Yeah. So what's, what's the problem today? Because I'm sending her home. Okay. Officers on the scene weigh the seriousness of the situation. She threw water and got on me. Okay, I got you. Um, and she, she got just... my cell phone in her hand. I okay. need my cell phone. And she wouldn't give it back? You told her to give it back? When suddenly, the subject interjects. The... It was on the counter. She, got, she won't give it to him. She threatened me. She I, 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 I ain't did nothing. You don't got to have to say I'm right here. Okay. I'm right here. The manager firmly communicates her stance to the officer. I'm not to talk you because I told her to call you. She so, we want to press charges, okay. for one. Okay. I want my cell phone. That's my no, problem. we're going to get your phone. If she has one here, then we're going to get It's a pivotal moment that sets the tone for what's to follow. Okay. So, if she took the phone, where is it at right now? Is it on her person? It's in her hand. Oh, that's the red one? The black and red one? No, not the, the one she got wrapped up in the pet towel. Okay, oh, it's on A sequence of unfortunate events that blur the lines between right and wrong, work and personal boundaries. The tension between the worker and the manager starts to escalate. Okay, ma am, ma am, ma am. Despite the officer's attempts to mediate, the woman keeps on rambling. I still feel that hair. You want to wipe that hair and okay. get it? Ma'am. Okay. I, I don't get it. All right, enough Show of this, ma'am. I'm on the phone. I'm talking about you, ma'am. But your body. I don't... It's as if she doesn't even acknowledge the cop's presence. Bad folks, number, franchise, or whoever. Yeah. I know this ain't corporate, so they, yo, we gonna get them stuck And you can make sure they cut down my money like this. Uh, <laughs> I got so sick. All right, With her entitled attitude, you just know things are about to take a turn for the worse from here on out. Can you get my stuff? I'm leaving folks for it. I just think I'm my money. Can somebody grab her stuff? Can somebody? What you got, baby? My coat. Where your coat is? Back there. 
she know. The worker vents to the person on the other end of the line. I, I, ain't, I ain't even tripping about no job. That's not even the point. She threw water at me. She sent me home for no reason. Everybody said that I was working with nobody backing me up when the line broke. Her agitation escalating with each passing minute. Meanwhile, the officer stays composed, politely asking the woman to step out. Step out for a second. Right, that's how she, I mean, the, um, right here. Tell her right here. Right here. Oh. And, and she said, you can go ahead and step out. After numerous delaying tactics, the woman finally steps out. Come on, let's go. Come on, walk away. How y'all gonna do it? Because I ain't like, I'm gonna put hair on top of her car. I ain't getting it yet. The officer attentively listens to her side of the story. What's going on today? I need you to talk to me, okay? I thought he was up front. What's going on today? Man, she got mad because I told her that I won't get transferred. That you weren't what? Getting transferred? I won't. I had no... In her defense, the worker paints a picture of dedication and hard work gone unnoticed. Um, Miss Tasha, I feel like it's like for me because I'm overworked myself. I'm the only cash in there. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which, at the end of the day, I've been a manager before. I, had, I got three years of management experience before I can't even go... A narrative of being the lone soldier in a battlefield of unappreciative co-workers and demanding work conditions. Well, I got a problem with people working with you and saying you're aggressive. So I'm like, well, Natasha, um, coming from a manager point of view, because I'm a manager also, if you got a problem, if somebody... She expresses her frustrations at being singled out. I did it wrong. You should tell me or let me know what I need to change in order for me to grow. I was like, so that's weird. I'm like, but we ain't even got to talk about it, because you know I'm still here working, and that's how I said Mm -hmm. and penalized for what she perceives as standing up for herself. We came to the conclusion that we're going to send you home tonight. And I was like, send me home for what? After I um, stopped up the whole story. Like, I did all that in there. Like, you going to send me home now? Why you didn't think to send me home when I first said The decision to send her home only fuels the fire. She was like, we're going to send you home or whatever, whatnot. So right now, um, she had no time out of fit that I called my kids. And I was like, just a little prayer for me. Like, you know, because I know I was getting beat. Like, I was overworked. Resulting in a heated confrontation. The altercation between the worker and the manager becomes a crucial turning point. Flip. What you mean? How did it feel? I hit the table. You say you hit the table? Yeah, and it flipped. They got cameras, got Apple Foot. They wanna know my daughter asked me, and she picked it up. She picked it up with her. Both parties claimed to be the victim. It flipped on my end, but it, she was thrown at me. So, so, so she tried to throw it at you? She picked it up and threw it. Yeah, she picked it up and threw it with her hand. I'm sorry for this. No, so but I just want to make sure it's she, clear. Let's, with accusations flying about who initiated the conflict. Hit the car or like hit the car. Yeah, okay. hard though, because I'm angry. Uh -huh. She picked up and threw it back at me. And by that time, by that time I told her she, she come outside. I did say that. The woman continues to express her disbelief over the issue. After you flip what on me, you're a fing manager. You, you just told me when I got here this morning, this when I mean this evening at phone, you said your ship got the air for everything. So why are you picking with me? And complains about the management in the fast food chain. The assistant manager, that I feel like I'm over from work. I'm the only cashier in there right now, as you see. This can be, this is just booming. And then nobody can help me. That ain't help me till after I say that. The officer untangles the series of unfortunate events. Right. The water flew. The water flew. On everybody, not just her, it's more than it's wet in there. Okay, and so she everybody. picked it up and threw it back. She, she tried to throw it back. She picked, didn't try, she did. But she it came out her. It hit me. That ultimately brought them to this present situation. After that, then what happened? Then I went in the lobby and I was talking to her because she called the police. Okay. At this point, I need to be bored. So you went straight to the lobby and just were sitting there where I saw no, you I was at? Talking, okay. I was talking yeah. He also clarifies the argument about the manager's phone. What you mean? It was on the camera. Okay. I couldn't get my, I couldn't get back there to get my stuff. Okay. So you just grabbed their phone off the counter? And I was holding it right there and I said I wasn't going to walk out. The woman, still on edge, claims her innocence on the matter. And I get what she said, but I never walked out them doors with her phone. I was right there. And yeah. her phone was actually right there too. Okay. What she mean? Alright, I got you. Do you have right. your ID? No, I don't got The manager enters the scene which triggers a negative reaction from the worker. Ma'am, just stay right here. Right here. Okay. Well, well she's right here. Listen. I'm okay. I'm away from her. Okay, I get that, but listen, I need you to stay in one spot. Well, I just don't want to stay my hurt. Okay. What's wrong with okay. me being wrong? As the police step in to assess the situation, the discussion turns to potential charges. Yeah, uh, witnesses saying that? Yeah, I have one of the, not her, but the other girl. I mean, the water's all over the floor. Mm -hmm. um, she, I mean, even on the... As the officers gather information from both sides, yeah, 
so she admitted to taking the phone that it was on the counter. She grabbed it and she walked around and then sat next to the Yeah. One of them presents the worker's perspective. It was on the table, so she went back there to go get her jacket or get her stuff or to clock out, and they wouldn't let her clock out. The lady was standing. The lady was standing in front of it, so she like banged the table and recounts the details of the water incident. They had a bucket of water, and the water. Um, I guess it splashed on everyone, and then she said that's when the lady grabbed the bucket and tried to throw it at her, and it ended up getting on like. Subsequently, the management side of the story is shared. Like they're like she's trying to throw the tea things. Like the other lady said she was trying to push her out of there. She's like actively threatening, like she's gonna um, come back and whoop her ass. She's gonna, that she's gonna have to get a Providing the necessary information to conclude the investigation. And so she's gonna flatten all of her tires and everything. I mean, we have we have enough. For Okay. The officer delivers the cold, hard truth to the worker. You're going to go to jail, okay? For taking her phone? I didn't take her phone, but I had my stuff Okay, listen. Right before you send me to jail. Which, of course, doesn't sit well with the woman. Okay, I'll get on. We're not worried about that. So put your hands behind your back. Listen. All right, all right, all right. Get the phone. I'm going to look. Right. And just like that, the worker finds herself in a situation nobody wants to deal with. Put your hands together like you're praying so it doesn't hurt. Like you're praying. Like you're praying so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, so it doesn't hurt. The workers' protests fall on seemingly deaf ears. Okay, ma'am. All right, you ready to put it in the car? Where's the... Dude, okay, we'll get, get it. We'll get it. The mention of illegal substances found in her possession adds another layer of complexity to the case. Her phone. Okay, please. I stole her phone because okay. I grabbed because she had my coat. You okay, see me pull there? your feet out. I can't. Listen to what she's doing. Dog, when I just doing it, you got to take your hand and put it right there. The arrest is a moment of reckoning and a culmination of the day's events that leaves the worker distraught. You're rough with me. You pissing not. me out. Yes, I'm you not. is. You are. Okay. Quit being. Stop stop with me. Hey, I'm barely no, I'm dead you. ass here. Ma'am, you been no, I'm for real. Y'all gonna finish have to beat okay, me. Okay, face that. Quit. Refusing to accept the charges against her. I said I stole her phone. Uh, trespass to property. How trespass the person I work here? You get you deprived. You don't want to charge me with that. I'll okay. talk to you. No, I'm for real. Yeah, please do, cause I'm gonna get a more you like a paid lawyer. She voices how unfair it all seems. Meanwhile, the cops discuss the worker's case. Not holding back on the charges. After wrapping up their discussion, the officers get back to business. Freaking out right now? Yeah, we just told her to cause two felonies. Um, all right, I'll take her out of here. Hey, actually, cool. yeah. Hey. Despite the officers' attempts to calm her down, her agitation only intensifies. Her worries now focus on the potential loss of her job. And the daunting prospect of facing felony charges. It's pretty impressive how she hasn't even stopped talking for a moment up to this point. Shortly after, the officer speaks with the fast food chain's manager again. I'm just sitting the home for the day. Huh? But creating all of that and threatening me like you lost your job behind it. I just didn't understand how she went from a Zero. Breaking the news of her ex-employee's unfortunate fate. Like, just anger. Well, she's been barred from the property. She's going to jail. Um, if you have anything else, or The workers got quite a laundry list of offenses. Turns out, 
Her disorderly conduct is just the tip of the iceberg. Takanisha, as she's identified, got banned from the fast food chain for two years and ended up getting arrested and taken to jail. And that's the end of our list. Who, in your opinion, made the most questionable decisions among these employees? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, check out our other stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. See you next time.